1969, the Rolling Stones announced that they were coming to play a series of concerts throughout the U.S. They hadn't toured since 1966. A lot had changed in America in those three years. So, let's drop the needle. On November 8th of that year, the Rolling Stones were going to play two concerts at the Fabulous Forum in Inglewood, one at 8 o'clock and one at 11. I had tickets for the 11 o'clock show. I was still a student at UCLA, living in a dorm. All the radio stations were playing non-stop Rolling Stones songs all day long. There were three opening acts, Terry Reed, B.B. King, and Ike and Tina Turner. I remember the DJ on the radio saying the first concert was running very late. And if you were coming to the later show, which was supposed to start at 11, he figured it wouldn't start until after midnight. Well, he was correct. The show did start well after midnight. And with three opening acts, and then taking the time to tear them down and set up for the next act, it made for a very long night. As I remember, each of the acts played for about an hour. Terry Reed was first. And I remember that I liked him, but I really can't tell you any of the songs that he played. He was followed by B.B. King, and B.B. King was great as always. And The Thrill is Gone, of course, closed his set. And then you get to Ike and Tina Turner. And I remember that they were really dynamic. They did Proud Mary, and of course, Tina danced all over the stage. Finally, the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest rock and roll band in the world, the Rolling Stones. And there they were, and they started their set at about 4 a.m. in the morning. They had just recorded the album Let It Bleed, and when they did Midnight Rambler, I remember Jagger taking off his belt and slapping it on the stage at the critical points of that song. Let's talk about Let It Bleed. It's a classic album. Just look at these tracks. Interestingly, the track list on the back cover is not the same order as the record. Hard to pick favorite tracks, but the ones that stand the test of time for me and keep me rocking are Gimme Shelter, Love in Vain, Midnight Rambler, and of course, The Closer, You Can't Always Get What You Want. The record reached number three in the U.S. and number one in the U.K., actually knocking the Beatles' Abbey Road out of the coveted number one spot. Get Your Yaya's Out was recorded live during the tour. Now, I always thought it was recorded at the L.A. show that I saw, but it turns out it was really recorded in New York City. It was released the following year. Besides being a great live album, it truly gives you a feeling of the show that I saw in L.A. There really isn't a bad track on the album. It starts with Jumpin' Jack Flash, then right into Carol, Stray Cat Blues, which they hadn't done for a while, Love in Vain, and Midnight Rambler. That's all on side one. And when they do Midnight Rambler, when Jagger slaps the belt on the stage, you can hear someone in the audience yell with him each time he does it. Flip the record over, you got Sympathy for the Devil, Live With Me, Little Queenie, and then the double shot of Honky Tonk Women and the closer Street Fighting Man. All around a great album. There's been some debate as to where the title of this album comes from. There is an old blues song called Get Your Yaz Yaz Out. And in that case, Yaz Yaz referred to an ass. So I guess shake your booty. However, Charlie Watts is wearing a t-shirt that doesn't show ass but shows breasts. And the Stones LP is titled Get Your Ya Ya's Out. So who knows where it came from. When the Stones finished the concert, we walked outside. It was after 6 a.m. and the sun was just coming up. What a night of rock and roll. If you liked this episode, hit the like button. And you can also leave me a comment down below and I'll respond to you. If you subscribe, we'll let you know when future episodes come out. There'll be many more memories about the music and the artists in future episodes. Until then, keep it rocking. Most of the albums that I talk about can be found at your local vinyl store or on eBay. Individual songs most likely are on Spotify, Apple Music, or Amazon Music, or even some on YouTube.